Hey, in this lesson, we're going to go over reducing student buyer's remorse for online course sales. Hey, in this lesson, we're going to go over reducing student buyer's remorse for online course sales. So first of all, what is buyer's remorse? So buyer's remorse is when customers feel regret after buying something that may have been unnecessary or too expensive. It sometimes happens when you buy a car or buy a house and you overpaid or you bought a product that you that you know seduced you or you liked but you really can't afford or it wasn't the right one. So that is buyer's remorse. And it can certainly happen for online course sales, especially higher priced courses. So when students feel this way, they may ask for a refund, right? Uh, it could be right away. It could be a few days later or a month later, but they might ask for a refund, especially when that bill hits the credit card. They may decide not to take lessons like, oh, I'm, you know, I'm just, I just can't handle this course. Or I may take, I might ask for a refund. So let me not even start and just let me leave it in perfect condition. Let me not start anything. Or after 30 minutes or an hour or whatever, after their first session, watching a few lessons, they may decide, oh, wow, I'm not into this or I can't commit to it. Another thing they may decide to you know, shut down the service or block messages, block emails. So, so that makes it harder for the teacher to communicate or, or, or do all the follow-ups or onboarding. And another thing is students may feel commitment pressure. Oh, you know, now I have to watch these, these 40 hours of, of, of lessons or I have to do all these assignments and they, they may, that may just be too much for them. Some students may decide to leave negative reviews. Hey, I was tricked. I, I thought it was this. I did this other thing and it, it wasn't what I expected. Um, they, the, the teacher said this and then when I got to the course, it was something else. And maybe with that negative review, they might also be planning to get, request a refund. It may be real or maybe a, a fake review or a negative comment, but it could happen. And then finally, they could report you. Uh, it could, again, it could be real or fake, but they could report you to a marketplace or Better Business Bureau or something like that. So it's best to avoid buyers getting in this situation. So, so what are some strategies that teachers can use to avoid students buying courses and then immediately feeling this remorse to try to get out of it? So a couple ideas. First, you can set expectation on the sales course page, right? You have frequently asked questions, you have who is this for? So you can provide a lot of great information about the course and who it's for to try to filter and you know really have a great match with your students. Next up, you can use testimonials and reviews, right? So there, there could be hand-picked testimonials that you put on your sales page, or maybe your course offers reviews from prior students and maybe you link to it from the sales page or maybe it's in the marketplace, but showing reviews of past customers could put new customers at ease. Another thing you can do is to offer a good guarantee, right? Maybe 30 days, maybe money back, maybe if they don't watch any videos, they can absolutely uh, return it. And you want to be careful that some people don't take advantage of you, buy the course, take a couple of classes, whatever they need, and then ask for a refund. So you need to watch for that as well. As a teacher, you can offer welcome messages. It could be video and a whole sequence to say, you know, welcome, we're, we're excited to have you, start here, start with this. Another thing is you can remind students about the length of access. Hey, once you buy this course, you have access to it for, for life or for five years. So take your time, don't worry about it, we're here for you. Another thing is, as soon as they buy the course, you can start to begin discussions with them, welcome them to a community or discussion rooms or anything like that. 
so that they can not only start learning, but also start engaging and, and seeing what, what's happening with their other student friends so that they can you know, see all the transformations that are about to happen and are already in progress. And finally, you can over deliver. So to really welcome uh, a new student and, and, and find out about what they want. So this could be maybe it's a personal email or a custom video that you send your, your new students. And obviously this won't scale, but you could do that until you kind of build up your, your revenues and your customer base and your reviews. So now you know what buyer's remorse is and what to look out for. And as a teacher and as a course business owner, you can start to do some things to reduce uh, buyer's remorse from your students, okay? So you can work on that sales page, you can work on that onboarding. Once they're in that class, you can get them going nice and easy, baby steps, so that they can start taking uh, positive movements towards their journey and their goals. I hope this lesson has helped you. Bye.